Hey everyone, Thad Smith here, executive chef at Cerno Products, America's leading provider of portable warming and ambient solutions for the food service industry. Welcome to the fourth episode of the podcast series, Getting Your Express Catering Operation Up and Running. In past episodes, we've covered everything from getting to the point where you're going to pull the trigger on the program, taking the dive, uh, doing homework, finding out all the things you need to know before you get going. Yesterday, we covered menu development and pricing. Now, this entire podcast series is available at sternopro.com forward slash training center. As you know by now, Express Catering, also known as Drop-Off Catering, is one of the fastest growing and profitable segments in food service. Just a quick refresh, refresher, Express Catering is a service extension of an established restaurant or caterer that is designed to work in concert with day-to-day operations and provide an additional stream of revenue. Uh, Express Catering provides customers with the opportunity to host an event, business lunch, family gathering, holiday party, and enjoy the same great food and experience of their favorite restaurant at their home, place of business, or any setting of their choice. I'm joined once again by our terrific friend and colleague, George Taranzo, Director of Operations at Salvation Pizza in Austin. We've been working uh, with George, helping him and his staff get an express catering program off the ground. During the process, we have put together a kind of case study that is part of our larger express catering educational program, which can be found at sternopro.com forward slash training center. At the Sterno Training Center, you will find a comprehensive toolbox to help with express catering program, including the Sterno Express Catering Five-Step Startup Guide. There are training videos, very short but very informative, cost calculators, safety info and posters, as well as this podcast series. Today, uh, we are going to talk to George about products and equipment that, uh, that he has sourced and uses in his express catering operation at Salvation Pizza. How food is delivered and displayed at an event is critical to your customer's experience and perception of your brand. It is imperative that food arrives looking appetizing and at an optimal serving temperature. So George, hello again. How are you? I'm well, thank you for having me. Good, of course. Hey, let's talk a little bit about Salvation Pizza. You guys started in an express catering program. Our folks can listen to our previous three podcasts on your journey to get to this point. We don't need to kind of rehash that. They can go back and listen to that. So let's talk about uh, you know, the products and equipment that you're using in your express catering operation. So uh, express catering is all about You know, you prepare the food, you package the food, you deliver the food, you possibly set up the food, and then it's kind of up to the customer from there after your the food is delivered. So let's talk a little bit about the packaging that you use for your express catering program. Okay, yeah, Uh, we get most of our packaging from our you know our national food uh, service provider, okay, uh, which uh, includes the um, express. catering kit okay uh, and then that obviously comes with pretty much everything that you need uh to execute this uh, uh this event uh it comes with the lids you know it comes with the, uh the pans um and then uh, also we also receive the fuel from from them as well okay so let's talk about the pans and the the racks and different things so Sterno is one of the products that we we sent you to test was the express catering startup set so this product is a full set of nine units. So it has nine wire racks, nine water pans, 18 food pans, the lids and the utensils. The, the fuel is sold separately. Now, uh, so are you taking the food in containers and then setting it up and, and then putting it all in the pans once you get to the location? Or is the process, are you, are, is everything done in the pans, sealed up and then sent off to the location? Yes, we are we are testing it as uh, you know sealing it into the pans now. Okay, um, and then you know obviously executing the transport just to minimize an extra step at the location and also to be able to get in and out uh, in a timely manner for them. So the the startup kit the, these these disposable chafers that you're using the pans not only act as a serving dis- unit but they they also act as a transportation kind of piece for you. So they're, they're serving many purposes. Absolutely. And that's, that's, what's attractive to somebody like us. We're trying to keep, uh, 
you know, there are obviously a lot of moving parts. We're trying to keep them to a bare minimum if we can, just to, for execution purposes. We do use uh, hotel pants to support uh, the fact that they are aluminum right. uh, during the transport phase. But yes. Okay, terrific. So as far as as far as these, so that's do you only use that these chafing dishes for hot service, or is there cold applications as well? It, it really depends on the setup. I am using them for um, for cold setup as well, just because of the look that it creates. It, 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 I think that especially a lot of our express catering that we're doing off the off the bat is um, for business lunches. Right. So it just looks better, I think, in the presentation. So we're willing to to do that for that as well, even though we're not using fuel under it. Right. So are you putting ice in the water pan instead of hot water? Correct. So ice goes in the water pan and then you put the half pans on top of that and you could serve salads. I've even seen, I don't know if you guys have done this yet, but I've seen operators that will actually just take the water pan, fill it with ice and then put beverages uh, through the whole thing. So it becomes kind of a beverage server as well. So the, the startup set, it's got these nine units. It's great for hot service. It's great for cold service. And it's also great for transport as well. Now you say you, you're getting these from your national food service distributor. Correct. So as far as your storage goes, what, what, are, how, many, how, many, how much of this stuff are you keeping around your shop, meaning the, the serving pieces, the, the chafing dishes? Do you have like a par level that you're working with? What's, what's your kind of minimum to have on hand? Yeah, so due to the fact that we do get delivery twice a week, I can go to a minimum of four. Um, so out of that out of that kit, you know, I can get down to four and still be able to, I think, to execute without a problem. Um, we did put an extra shelf, uh, mostly just to keep it in a separate area from everything else so it doesn't get confusing. But um, we do have the luxury of the one kitchen that is bigger. Uh, but just a small shelf above everything else or separate area has seemed to work best for us so that nobody else gets into it except for when we use it for express catering. Sure. Now, you mentioned food safety in a couple of our previous conversations. Now, talk to me about what the temperature of the food, the hot food specifically, what is the temperature of the hot food that you're sending out to an express catering event? So let's just reinforce. Yesterday you said you're not serving you're not bringing food to temp up at the location. It's already hot and ready to go. So from your shop, what is the temperature of the hot food in these pans? Yeah, so we're looking actually to do three readings where we want to, uh, as we cook the food, we want to get it to about 155, 160 um, and go ahead and move it over into the, uh, the, uh, the pans. Uh, right before we actually seal it up, we want to take another temperature and I really want to be above 150 to 155 at that point. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, obviously put it in a, in our transport. Uh, and then the final reading is at the location. Once we're getting ready to open it up for service, we want to make sure we're between 145 and 150 at our reading. What, how, what, what instrument are you using? What tool are you using to take the temperature? Uh, we're using an instant read thermostat thermometer. Okay. Sorry. Uh, just to make sure that, you know, we have an accurate, and I'm actually keeping a log on that on every delivery to make sure that it is accurate. And your staff is trained to use these as well. Yes. There is, speaking of that, uh, one of the videos that we produced uh, in conjunction with this project we're working with Salvation Pizza on is how to use an instant read thermometer. You'd be surprised. Most folks think, oh, it's just, you know, an analog thermometer probe thermometer, uh, but there are some really helpful tips on how to use uh, an instant read thermometer. Um, let's talk a little bit about getting the food from your shop to your customer. Are you, are you just loading it into a truck? Does it go into a special insulated cabinet? What are you using to get food from the shop to the customer? Uh, yeah, so we're using um, uh, special containers that we've, uh, we've bought and some that we've had. Uh, one of them is being uh, a, a, a warmer container that's already pre-warmed. Right. Uh, we also use um, polyester bags that we use our pizzas, but we, okay. we add that stuff to it as well. So you mentioned the food transporter, and it's, it's warmed already. How are you warming that unit to get it ready for service? Yeah, so ideally we like to bring that above 140 uh, degrees. So what we're doing is we're putting in a, uh, a six-inch pan into the warmer uh, at almost to the boiling point of water, about six inches of water, 190 degrees optimal. Throw it in there real quick, close the door, let it sit for 30 minutes so it does bring up that temperature inside. Right. Uh, and then carefully, 
uh, when we're ready to, uh, to actually package it in there, we want to carefully make sure we remove that hot water. It's still going to be warm, right. uh, just not to burn yourself. And then go ahead and load uh, the food quickly in there to be able to close it back up in order to maintain as much uh, temperature as possible. So six inch hotel pan goes into the bottom of the food transporter. You, you put hot water in that, something about, about like two or three quarts of really, really hot water, maybe almost to the point of boiling, shut the door, let it warm up, pull the water out, and then in goes your food. And you, you mentioned supporting the foil pans during transport with an aluminum kind of food pan to support them in transport. Is that correct? Correct. Super. Now let's talk a little bit about the fuel you're using. You mentioned that you, when you are going out to set up on location, you're using uh, chafing fuel. What chafing fuel have you decided to use? Uh, we've chosen the, the green two-hour wick fuel um, for several purposes. Uh, number one, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a green product, which is always good. Uh, to use, and especially in the, in the restaurant business, we're always trying to get better at being green. Uh, but more importantly, also for the uh, safety of it, uh, it the wick uh, product stays cool while in service. So once we leave that product there, uh, it's optimal to have them not burn themselves. A lot of people that we're leaving this with don't know about you know the food safety part of it. So if they go to touch it, it could be hot, and this product allows it to be a, a cool product so they don't get burned themselves. Great. The fuel, it's a green product. It's available from Sterno. It's a two-hour wick product. You mentioned that the can stays cool. One of the other things that we have found with a lot of express catering operations is they like the wick product quite a bit. The, the gel product is terrific, but they like that wick product for what you mentioned. The can stays cool to the touch. The other thing a lot of folks don't realize is that with a wick product, the fuel is always being drawn to the top of the can. With a gel product, the fuel is being consumed down into the can. Um, so you're actually, with a, with a WIC product, you're getting two hours of solid performance with it. Now, let's move on to what happens once the food arrives uh, at the customer. They've ordered, you've got a party for 15. It's a lunch. They've got a number of hot items that are happening. Who, who is responsible for the setup? You have customers that say, just leave it with us. We'll take care of it. Or does your staff set it up for the customer? No, we pretty much insist on our staff uh, setting it up. A lot of it has to do with the safety, okay. uh, making sure that the product is actually placed in a proper uh, stable environment. And then also to make sure that the surroundings, uh, you know, as we set up the, the wire rack uh, and we add the hot water, uh, these are things you don't want customers touching, obviously, due to safety. Uh, put the hot water in there. Go ahead and close it up. Start the uh, the, the Sterno two-hour wick fuel. Um, light it. And also making sure that everything around it is not going to, you know, nothing. there's no paper napkins, nothing that's going to catch on fire. All these things that, you know, other people that are not in the food restaurant or restaurant business uh, would not notice. And it could be a potential hazard. So we try to make sure that we set it all up and it's all copacetic, if you will. Uh, before we take off. Very good. Let's talk a little bit, our last topic today, about how, how you're handling delivery. You know, some of the folks we work with, they've got staff that deliver the food. Are you, is, it your, is it your internal staff that's managing delivery or are you doing something else? Uh, at the moment, we're doing both. We are doing internal delivery and third-party deliveries. Um, as the world goes, I think we're going to move into a full third-party deliveries, but right now we're executing with both. What is it? So explain the third party. How does that work? And who are you using? Yeah, so it's been something that in the last several, in the last couple of years uh, has really come into um, into play into delivery systems, as probably most of your listeners uh, know. Dine on Demand, Eat Out In, and Mr. Delivery. Okay. Those are the three that are prominent for us. Uh, they've all uh, have been seeking out this kind of express catering um, format so that they can deliver to their customers. They really specialize in the in the downtown area, and they are also excited about using the kit, which will help separate Salvation Pizza from other drop-off kind of style catering that doesn't have the food safety, doesn't have the appeal to it, the look of it, uh, and really the professional look that you're looking for. That, that I think the wire racks really come into play with that, and having all the utensils where you can leave it and just you know, they don't have to return for any product is also a plus for the third-party deliveries. 
how do you how are you training their people? So my concern would be, okay, so I know how to control the brand with my staff. I know how to control the quality and everything else. How does that work with third parties? How are you making sure that your product and your brand are being well represented when your people aren't around to you know witness what's happening? Well, once this podcast series is over and uh, we have all the information on paper, I'm actually going to hand them that as well (laughs) just to help out as I will with my staff. But no, we do go through a a, a testing. We we're fortunate that the same people deliver out of the same location all the time. That's one of one plus. So it's usually three or four drivers that alternate through a weekly basis. So we bring them in and kind of go through the whole process from beginning to the point that they take it over and our expectations from the time they take it over, literally show them how to set it up, go through the process of it, when, when to take the temperature reading so they can write it down and email us that temperature reading uh, after the delivery uh, time. So it's all about education, whether it's your in-house staff or a third-party delivery. You just have to put a focus in it. Luckily, the people that um, manage these three uh, companies are you know, also into the food safety uh, and are willing to uh, execute that training. So these folks, you feel confident, and it sounds like you're putting the time and the training in to make sure they're representing you really well. Absolutely, and it's in their best interest. Um, you know, the, the one thing that we found with the third-party delivery, that's all they do. So their their business is, since they're actually promoting us as well, is to execute it as well as if we would do it in-house, which makes it a really good partnership. It's not like they're saying, oh, that's Salvation Pizza's thing. It's not our thing. Uh, we're in it together. So it helps that, you know, they're uh, wanting to execute the best product, safety, temperature, and the look of it. So it's, it's really become a, a really good um, uh, business model for us. You don't, you don't have to tell me exact figures here, but do they get a percentage of the sale or is there a delivery fee that they're paying or is it a combination of the two? It's a percentage. Um, you know, they all start out at a, at, a, at a lower percentage to kind of bring you on board. Uh, but typically, it's a third of, of, of the product. But we find it to be, uh, they do a lot of marketing uh, and analytics uh, that they, they, and they have plenty of contacts in town. So we find it very, very helpful. And it also gets our name out via a third party. We've covered a lot. We've talked about the Express. Uh, catering startup set that has the nine complete units in it. We talked about the type of fuel that you're using, which is the two-hour wick product. You like that product because the can stays cool, uh, even though it's producing a nice amount of heat out of the top, but it's easy to handle even when it's lit. It's also a green product, which is very helpful. We talked about that food transporter, making sure that it is at 140 degrees or higher before the food goes in. We talked about making sure the temperature of the food was hot when it leaves the shop and when you are on location. And finally, we talked about the third party uh, delivery system that I think is going to be very successful for you. So that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much, George, for being with us. Um, We'll be with George again next time with episode episode five of, of getting your express catering operation up and running. Our topic that time will be training your staff. Uh, be sure to follow Sterno Products on Facebook and Twitter. That's hashtag Express Catering. It's salvationpizza.com, correct, George? It is. And we're at sternopro.com forward slash training center. George, thanks so much. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you for having me. All right, guys, keep cooking. Thanks. <laughs>